Hi everyone. Today let's see what are the three pillars for every successful organization. So it is a discussion on what things to be followed. What are the priorities? What are the priorities? How a successful organization can run? Uh, how can an attrition rate can be reduced? So what an employee expects from an organization? So everything is detailed in this course. Assuming three important points for every successful organization. So let's see what are the three important pillars for every successful organization that should be in place. So let's continue. So before that, so uh, let's see the three main pillars, one after the other. First important pillar for running an organization is a good process in place. Second important pillar for running an organization is the employee. And third important pillar for the organization is the employee's learning curve and the encouragement which he receives. So these are the three main pillars that every successful organization has in good shape. So let's discuss in detail on each and important pillar of a successful organization. So first important pillar was a good process. So what is a good process? A good process is one which is framed out from a large set of experiences, from people's experiences put together and it was as a result of so many successful releases and so many successful failures. It's through experience which was devised. So as we can see the statement over here, it was mentioned like a good process is one which was framed out of incorporating a large set of experiences which was put together which had come out of success and also failures. Why? Because failures makes us to learn so many so many things. So it's not only from the success that we make up a good process but also from a lot of failures we learn up so many things which should be avoided. So a good process is always established from failures and success. So this is one of the major part that drives the organization to success. Without a good process in place, employees will be unsatisfied and there is always a possible chance for a high attrition rate without a good process. Second one, employees themselves are the second main pillar. Why employees themselves? Without an employee, there is not by an organization. With every single dedicated employee, organization success rate increases beyond and beyond. So who are those employees? Let's see. Every, as the statement here mentions that every single dedicated employee, a dedicated employee is far more better than tens of employees who just come and go on. So who are the second main pillar? A dedicated employee who is trying to achieve the success for the organization, who is achieving success for himself, which in turn tries to achieve the success for the organization. So a dedicated employee is always a second pillar for the organization's success. Since these employees doesn't like to fail themselves and the organization. So when an employee doesn't like to fail, never an organization fails. So this is how that results in an, empl that results in an employee success, which in turn results in an organization success. So a good organization will always try to have a dedicated employee at any cost. Third important pillar was the employee's learning curve and the encouragement which he receives in turn. Retaining an employee is a very crucial part for an organization. As the number of employees starts leaving the organization, the success rate of the organization goes down and down. So how to retain an employee and not allow him to leave onto the organization? So 60% of the employees retained in the organization are long term based, based on some important factors. The learning curve, 
the challenges we had. So, or so most of the employees were so much dedicated. They always wanted to have something challenging work. So they always try to take up some challenging work and learn from them. So that's the major factor for the employees to be retained. Second is the employee who has been retained, who has been working so well, should always be given some recognition or encouragement, maybe not in terms of a benefits, but at least in terms of through words or mails. So this at least makes them much more encouraged and uh, they, t- they tend to work much more. So this is the way that the employee attrition rate reduces. So this is how, this is the third most pillar for in a, every organization. Because employees who are, employees who are satisfied, are satisfied based on the learning they are getting in the organization or based on the encouragement they are receiving or based on the salary benefits they are receiving. These are the three main factors that tend to make an employee stay for a long term. So to revise back, good process will always tend an employee to run in the long term for the organization. They wanted to work more and they wanted to enhance the process so that they attain a good success rate. A good success rate for an employee is always a good success rate for the organization in turn. Second, employees, as already noted, every dedicated employee is a pillar for an organization. Losing a pillar is losing a dedicated employee is losing a pillar for the organization. So it always reduces the success rate of the organization. Next important pillar is the benefits that the employee is being received, not maybe in terms of monetary value, but in terms of the encouragement, in terms of the learning curve they receive from the organization. So these are the main facts that makes an organization a dreamer for success or an achiever of success. So let's see uh, other things. Organizations achieve long-term trust of the employees as I told, when an employee sees a challenging career, when an employee sees a very good learning curve, an employee is appreciated or rewarded, might be not in terms of monetary value for the success he brings in, but in at least in terms of through or some ways. And the fourth important point is considering the feedback for an every dedicated employee. So employees are dedicated when an organization does give at least a minimum benefit uh, for the learning curve, at least an appreciation or rewarding, rewarding them for the success rate they bring in or a challenging atmosphere. So whenever they are having, they are having a challenging atmosphere, they try to learn more and more from it. So it is a great experience for an employee, so they tend to spend more and more time in the organization. So, as I told, who are these employees from whom an organization can collect, can get the feedback from? So, these are the employees who are not leads, who are not managers, who are not directors, who are not at any level equal to and above leads. Why? Basically, this is not the set of employees. Because these are the set of employees, they get the direct benefit from the organization for whatever the success they bring in, they drive in. So these are not the direct employees for an organization. The direct employees, the the organization success rate is always looking from the indirect employees. Who are the indirect employees? The indirect employees or the employees who are below the lead level because they don't have access directly to the management to convey any information. They don't have, they cannot take the decision by their own even though they wanted to make some announcements or they wanted to make some changes and they will never be asked for any feedback for anything. 
only the lead and the manager level are directly managing everything so the people who are bringing success are not any way related to any feedback that i have been given or anything that has been done in the organization success so these are the people set of people who are direct in direct who are indirectly leading for the organization success and these are the people they work much harder and their percentage of work is much 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 and much that is tending for an organization to success so most of the or- successful organization take feedback from the employees the so called employees who are below the lead level as for an analogy we can go with a political atmosphere whenever an election takes place surveys will be made the surveys will not be made from the mlas and ps or nlc no political leader will never go and take a survey from all feedback from mlas and ps etc any parliamentary so why this is because they will never provide any ground reality ground reality is always obtained from the low level people who work for their parties so the same analogy stays well for this for any organization to be successful the feedback should be from the ground level it's not from the managers or the directors or the leads because they always tend to manage the things but not their technical they are not in to the aspects of running the organization or driving the organization success they add up to the organization success by leading by managing the teams but the ground reality stays with the teams behind them so let's look into other things so what's the best process incorporated by organization to attain minimum attrition rate so most of the organization which are driving through higher attrition rate have brought down successfully to a lower attrition rate or to a minimum so how they achieve it so some of the organizations change the leadership and the great leadership when they are come in when they are driving the organization they are tend to follow some basic principles they started to analyze what's the ground reality rather than getting the feedback from the top level management so they started taking the feedback from the employees at the ground level so it was below the leads who are straight forward to give the feedback in direct form so that benefited the organization and those organizations restricted the attrition rate through this so they took the feedback they acted upon it they had given the solution for that and through this they attained the successful way of cutting out the attrition rate so these are the basic pillars for every organization success so as i told a good process is one which brings in multiple good people for the organization to work and good employees are always a beneficiary in the in attaining or delivering the success rate of the organization and the employees learning curve is benefits the employees in directly and directly is which allows an employees to take a longer turn in the organization so these are the three important pillars that every successful organization which is no dreamer we always try to put in place so what's that called a good process so as i told a good process what i meant by a good process as i told it is the one which is used for driving successful accomplishments so how this good process can be brought in it's through experiences it's through failures it's through the inputs taken from the teams it's through the inputs taken from various sources of employees everything put in together in place is a very good process so following a good process will lead to a successful outcome yeah surely at max if and only if it was dedicatedly followed a good process is something 
as such built from many failures and is something which when believed and practiced to be repeated which when believed and practiced by everyone in the team would lead to definite outcome and it's a definite success as someone already told it's a successful solution is always an outcome of many failures and success so accumulating the solutions from failures and success together and following them and practicing them in day to day activities will ultimately lead to a definite outcome and it is only success no failure so this is what the basic discussion which i wanted to do just to incorporate some changes any organization can follow these three basic principles <clears throat> or these three basic pillars when they are strong on these three basic pillars organization will have a low attrition rate or no attrition rate organization is always successful and will be driving through success employees are always happy so these three pillars can achieve everything for a successful organization thanks everyone